main event. This fight scheduled for 12 rounds. Terence Crawford in the blue and gold trunks. Kell Brook repping the UK in the white with red and blue. And right away, you see Terence Crawford starting in the orthodox stance, but he will switch, arguably the best to ever do it, between southpaw and orthodox. Fighting a lot more recently, Chris, in that southpaw stance, but here he is starting in the orthodox. Yeah, I'm surprised actually to see him coming out orthodox. I expected him to come out southpaw. I think Kelberg probably expected him to as well. There you see that jab from Kelberg. He actually has an excellent, excellent jab. Uses it very well. He's very active with it, uh, is, is Kel Brook. So that's going to be a, a big weapon for him, especially early on. Sure is, and it's something that Crawford and his team are aware of, telling us in our fighter meetings this week. Uh, Terrence saying, I see him trying to out-jab me and time me and continue to jab before me, but I have a pretty strong, pretty quick jab as well. We saw a lot of that in that fight against Postal, who a lot of people talked about Victor Postal's jab, and Crawford beat him to that. So uh, we'll see which game plan prevails here, as, as the one-two of, of Brooke is also a beautiful, uh, a, a thing of beauty to watch. Now, speaking about jabs, one of the big parts of uh, a good jab is being long. And Terrence Crawford has a 74-inch reach advantage for a welterweight, which is unheard of. Yeah, and only a 5'8 welterweight. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we talked about Brooks' resume getting him to this point. Some people saying the best opponent that Crawford has faced being that he beat Sean Porter to win that welterweight world title in 2014. Moved up to 160, fought for Nadi Golovkin, lost. Errol Spence was his last fight at 147, lost the IBF title there back in 2017. Is he still a high-class caliber fighter as he, wa as he was then, racking up three wins since that Errol Spence loss? Or has father time taken its toll on the 34-year-old and on his face, albeit orbital fractures in both sides coming off the losses to Gennady Golovkin and Errol Spence? Kubrick doing a good job, landing some nice, hard, solid jab so far. Has been able to out-jab the longer Terrence Crawford in this first There it round. is. There's, There's another again. strong jab from Kelbrook early. But staying orthodox. Something Kelbrook has to be careful of is a lot of times he, he overthrows his punches. Sometimes he gets tall, leaving himself open. Um, look for Terrence Crawford to come over the top at times. Kel also saying, I can switch too, and I may implement that in my game plan as well, as you see now, Bud Crawford going southpaw. Yeah, we've seen Kel, you had mentioned starting slow against Kavalowskis, did Crawford in his last fight. Um, Kavalowskis, who is a very strong guy and very powerful powerful uh, fighter, is not as explosive and maybe not doesn't hit quite as hard as Kel Brook is, so Terrence really needs to be careful in these early rounds. Sure, and a lot of that explosiveness and power from Kelbrook comes from those legs. I don't know if you had a chance to see the weigh-ins, or you can probably even tell now he has an extremely strong base, very solid legs, and generates a lot of his power uh, from that bottom half. So Yeah, Kelbrook always has tremendous physique and great conditioning. Kelbrook has 27 knockouts in his last, or excuse me, in his 39 wins, and he has won two of his last three fights by knockout. Kel's looking very quick at 47. I'm, I've been impressed, you know, so far. You know, he looks faster than usual. And he did say in the fight, I mean, this is my weight class. This is where I started. Yeah, you're coming up from 135 pounds, but I am uh, a natural 147 fighter. And these guys had a nice battle, War of the Worlds, a uh, War of the Words this week. It's been, uh, it's been interesting and entertaining to, to kind of follow it. Although I would give the edge to Crawford in that sense. I mean, it's really hard to to beat him at, at trash talking. He's an ultimate competitor in every single thing that he does. I've spent a lot of time around him working uh, for top rank all of these years, and I don't think I, I've ever met anyone in the world as competitive as he is. So Yeah, Kelbrook is, and, you know, personality-wise, is definitely much more of a, a more Late, quiet, yeah. laid-back kind of guy. Agreed, but held his own. Yeah, he did. He did. And is holding his own right now, right now as we're midway through round two. And he gets caught with a sharp lead jab from Crawford there. As Crawford has remained in the orthodox stance for most of the first two rounds. And then a good right hand there from Brooke coming in. Both men really sharp shooting at this point. Going for tick for tack. Very, very tactical from the outset. I think both men fighting with a lot of respect for the other. 
Do you think that Kelbrook looks that much bigger uh, than Bud tonight? I know size was a big thing that we, we talked about leading up. I, I do see him being bigger. You know, I, I just understand him being a bigger guy. I don't think it's going to be that important as, as, you know, Kel has been talking about all week. Um, you know, at the end of the day, skills pay the bills. And it, this, this fight's not going to come down to who's the bigger man. Yeah, that, and that seems to be what Kel... Well, that was his narrative that he was pushing. I'm bigger. I'm stronger. He hasn't seen anybody my size, my size. That was uh, his narrative that he pushed the, the, the whole time. And um, A little surprising, honestly, because I, I don't think he's the kind of guy who fights using his size that much. He's a, he's very quick. He's explosive. He's a good counter punch. He's a good jab. He's not a physically, you know, demanding pressure fighter who's going to use his physical girth or size to push no, no. him. And... and this has been a little bit of a chess match here in the world. ESPN's pound for pound number one, Terrence Crawford against Kel Brook. Now, if you notice, we got a great view right here looking at the feet. We're seeing a South Pole Orthodox, and you're seeing both men battling for that outside position. That's very, very important when you are fighting an opposite stance to make sure that you have the outside position. That's the dominant position when you're fighting uh, an opposite stance. That's see that what happened just there. Kelbrook pulling back with his chin up in the air. That's where he really needs to be careful with the reach and the timing of Terrence Crawford as you're pulling away. Crawford giving him a different look here, starting this round for the first time in the fight as a southpaw. The first two rounds were as orthodox as used. Take a look at some of the punch stats. A 36% clip landed for Kelbrook. About the same amount of punches thrown there and. That, that right strong hand jab from Crawford in this southpaw position is, is where he's very comfortable with that. His strongest hand out in front as you see him throw it there to the body and then doubling it up back up top. Yeah, he definitely seems to be way more comfortable out fighting out of southpaw stance. We've seen it more in recent years, him starting fights from that, fighting entire fights right. out of the southpaw position. Which is why I'm surprised it's always he's always still listed as an orthodox fighter because as of late, just to your point, he's done so much work. If you kind of logged the minutes, I know. Things start to heat up here in round number three. Terrence Crawford in the States before the bell, a minus 1,100 underdog, meaning you'd have to bet $1,100 on Terrence Crawford to win 100. Chris and I were talking about, you know, earlier in the week, it was 7 to 1. Odds. We were like, wow, I can't believe Brooke is that much of an underdog. He doesn't look it here yet through three rounds, but Crawford starting to get his respect. That strong right jab having some success here in round three in that or, or excuse me, southpaw position. For the people at home, they might not think a whole lot is going on, but there is a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of tactical work from both men Ooh, right now. Nice Beautiful right hand right there hand. from Brooke and a counter from Bud. All these shit. Savage combinations though. Beautiful right hand. Get over here. Chest right there. Get over here. One of the best closers in the game. 27 knockouts in his career. Do we have 28 right here? This fight is awesome. Yeah. Is, is, this is, this is, this is. Vicious attack to close it. No, 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 no. And he stares him huh. down. Okay. With his family here, his wife, he's up. Miss Deborah, his mom, he does.